Good evening, Francisco. How are you? Good evening, teacher. I'm fine, and you? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for asking. Welcome back to your English class. We always start the class with Francisco. <laughs> Excellent, Francisco. Very good that you are just on time. All right, so let me check some things and let's get started with the content. So let's see, today we have broccoli is good for you. That's the name of section fourth. Look at you guys, you're just about to finish the course. And then tomorrow we're going to have class 10 and pretty much you're just missing like six classes and that's it. All right, so very good, I'm happy for you. Today is class nine. It's a pleasure to have you. Let me see who else do we have in the classroom. Hi, Lourdes. Good evening. Lou. <laughs> let's see, let's hope her audio gets better. All right, let me check. We have somebody else. Hi, Azucena. Good evening. Good evening, me. How are you? I'm very tired. Really? Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, Azucena, but don't worry. We're going to get really warm in here in the class. <laughs> All right, so let's get started, everybody. Welcome back to your English class. It's a pleasure to see you. Today, we're going to have sort of as a review, right? Something like a review. And let me check. We have these three, no, these four questions, All right. Listen, estas questions las utilizamos ayer, las vamos a utilizar ahora, right? Quién sabe si mañana o el último día de clases de nuevo, right? ¿Por qué? Porque veo que estos son como las cositas que nos han costado un poquito más, right? Y es entendible, es bastante contenido por semana, así que está muy bien que hagamos un repaso, right? So let me check. Uh, mention at least three activities that you recall. Let me check Lourdes. Tell me three activities that you recall, Lourdes. For example, handles money. Okay. Let's see. What about you, Azucena? And uh, <laughs> where, where's a uniform? Where's the uniform? Uh -huh. mm, eh, um, usted ya dijo Handles Money, que es una de las que más recuerdo también. Uh, repetirla. <laughs> eh, sits all day. Sits all day. That's correct. Easy peasy, right? Thank you, Azucena. That's correct. Let's see, mention the structure of B plus adjective. Estas estructuras eran largas, right? Eran largas, así que yo comprendo, pueden leer su notebook. Lo que quiero ver es eso, si están tomando notas, right? Porque este es contenido largo. So let me check. Francisco, Francisco, can you tell me the structure of B plus adjective? La estructura de B, de B plus adjective. Article A or and plus profession plus apostrophe S plus verse B plus adjective. That's correct, very really good. Thank you, Francisco. Let's see. What about number three? Create one sentence using that structure. Esta estructura, como ya habíamos hecho las sentences, pues por cuestiones de tiempo, no creo que le quede mucho tiempo para hacerla. Pero pueden decirme de, las, de los examples que tuvieron anteriormente, right? Let me check. Let's see. Carlita no estaba. No, no me contesta. Let's see. Orlando Echeverría. Ok, Orlando, tell me one sentence using that structure. Utilizando la estructura del B plus adjective. Ok, Miss. One moment, please. Yeah, sure. Take your time. Puedes decirme de las que hizo aquel día, right? Sí, sí. Uh, B plus adjective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, number one, a cashier's job is stressful. Stressful. Mm -hmm. And number two, a journalist's job is interesting. That's correct, sir. Very good. There you go. Okay, thank you. Let me see. Let's go with number four. Mention the structure of adjective plus noun. Let me see. Laura Pamela. Hi, Laura. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for asking. Laurita, nos regala la estructura del adjective plus noun, please. Okay, miss. Dale eh, el cuaderno. Es A or AM. No, R, A or N plus profession plus has plus A or N plus adjective plus noun. Right, excellent. Thank you. What else? <laughs> okay, excellent, Laurita. Very good. That's correct. Thank you. All right, everybody. This type of questions are helping us to recall content learned, all right? I need you to make sure that you understand this, that you are practicing this. And I hope that by today you already finished section three and also the midterm exam, all right? Now we're going to have this practice, all right? El tema de ahora de la section four es algo cortito relativamente, all right? Pero necesito que hagamos esta practice con el simple present. ¿Por qué? Quiero ver cómo estamos, recordamos todo the content que hemos visto desde las primeras clases, right, so far. We have 14 sentences, right? Tratemos de hacer at least 10 sentences, right? Tenemos tiempo, así que tratemos de hacer al menos de la 1 a la 10. Aunque si ustedes les logran hacer las 14, it's okay, right? Simple present. Aquí vienen todas las formas del simple present. Como puede ser third person singular, eh, first person singular, los verbs in normal tense. Don't or doesn't, all right? Todo eso va incluido aquí. Ustedes van a ir viendo cuando están en negative a cómo lo vamos a cambiar, all right? En este caso ya saben que si tenemos un negative solo puede ser don't or doesn't. So let's work these sentences on your notebooks, please. Trabajémoslas en los cuadernos, all right? If you need help, you may let me know as well. Algo tricky de estas sentences, cuando digo tricky, algo misterioso, all right, de estas oraciones, es que algunas ya tienen el verb in simple present, right? Hay cosas que no las vamos a cambiar. So, vamos a ver cuáles son las que ya lo tienen.
Okay, let me tell you something, guys. Tenemos a Sandrita y a Jaime. Hi, Sandra and Jaime. Welcome back to your English class. All right. Estamos practicando ahorita con el simple present. Vamos a utilizar todas las formas del simple present que sean necesarias en las sentences, ¿ok? Tanto negativas como afirmativas, right? Así que lo estamos completando en los notebooks, right? If you have questions, you can ask me. Ok, good evening. Thank you, teacher. Good evening. Yes, Sandrita.
Okay. Uh, remember, guys, that in third person singular and a tercera persona singular, nuestro verb cambia, right? Se le agregan la S en algunos casos y en otros se les cambia algunas letras y se pasa a I, S, right? So let's take into consideration that no nos olvidemos de eso, first person singular, I just need my simple verb, third person singular, I'm going to change my verb. Si es en negativo, me agarro de los auxiliaries, don't or doesn't, y ahí nos vamos, right?
let's see guys if you have a any issues or problems let me know all right este tipo de práctica nos va a ayudar a ver si tenemos un gap todavía algún espacio que no nos quedó muy llenito y lo podemos rellenar ahorita right así que si tienen una duda con alguna sentencia en específico me pueden ir diciendo ok All right, let's get started. Let me check. Vamos a ir haciendo el análisis de algunas sentences porque algunas sentences sí merecen el análisis, all right? Vamos a ver. Eh, for number one, let me see, Francisco, dígame cómo la puso usted, number one. I got up say I am. I don't get up by I am. Exactly, that's correct. ¿Por qué, Miss? Porque no puedo utilizar el do. Bueno, no lo necesitan. Recuerden que un, el do es un auxiliary. En este, ca, en este caso, como yo no estoy utilizando verb to be, porque el simple present y el verb to be no son lo mismo. All right? Entonces, en este caso, I get up at 6 a.m. No necesito ningún auxiliary. All right? Mi verbo puede solo. Pero en este caso sí lo necesito. All right? Porque no hay otra manera en la cual decir la negativa en el simple present. Entonces, utilizo el don't. Let's go with number two. Let me see. Fabiola, what do you have for number two, Fabiola? Um, creo que ahí tampoco necesito poner uno, solo my father shaves every day. Exactly, there you go, shaves. Si sí, lo va a poner el verbo en tercera ¿Cómo? persona, shaves. Shaves. No le va a agregar la S. Ah, ok, solo la S. Sí. Pero con el apóstrofe, ¿verdad? Eh, no. La, no, no solo se les agrega. Ah, ok. No okay. es posesivo y tampoco es verb to be. Así que solo le agrego el, el, la S. Así de simple. Así simple. <risa> exactly. My father shapes every day. Thank you, Fabi. Okay. Eh, Laura Pamela, number three. Mm. No sé si era doesn't o don't. Yes, mm. you're good. <laughs> Con la primera. Margot. Margot doesn't take a shower in the afternoon. There you go, girl. That's correct. Doesn't. ¿Por qué doesn't y no don't, Laura? Mm, ¿Por qué es tercera persona? Yay, exactly. That's correct. Very good, Laura. Thank you. Let me see, Jaime Ernesto, number four. Okay, teacher. Uh, my sister brushes her teeth every day. Exactly, there you go, simple, right? ¿Está fácil, Jaime? Yes. Excellent, very good, thank you. Let's see. Esto es para que nos recordemos del simple present, porque ya teníamos, si hemos estado viendo el simple present de diversas formas, right? Porque en este tense tenemos bastantes formas, all right? Tenemos auxiliares, tenemos negativos, tenemos afirmativos, tenemos preguntas, all right? Pero no nos habíamos concentrado en sí ya en trabajar justamente con el simple present. Así que, let's move on. Let's go with number five. Esmeralda del Rosario. 
Ok, cabala que no sé. <risa> eh, I think is my parents don't watch TV in the evenings. Como que no sé, Esmeralda, si me la dio correcta. <risa> es que me confundo cuando, se, eh, cuando trata de my parents, eh, por ejemplo, my brother, my mother, me confunde un poco. Exactly, pero lo hizo muy bien. Es que my parents, en este caso, estamos utilizando el subject they. Y como mi regla gramatical me dice que el they no lo toco porque no es tercera persona singular, entonces solo pongo el auxiliar don't. And that's okay. it. Thank you, Miss. Very good, Esmeralda. Thank you for your participation. Let me see. Ronnie, what do you have for number six, Ronnie? Salina, that put me up to school every day. A ver, a ver, repita de nuevo, no le escuché. Salina, <laughs> that put me up to school every day. All right. Aquí, como no está negativo, Ronnie. Oh. Este no oh, es negativo. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, 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 no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Entonces, ¿cómo sería, Ronnie? Karina puts um, Karina put on um, makeup. Say to the day. Like That's studio. correct, sir. Okay. Ah. Sorry. Uh, uh, I see though. I confuse you on and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't uh, worry. El on is okay. preposition. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank right. you, teacher. You're welcome, sir. Let me see. Uy, let me see. Let's continue with number seven. Let's see, Estreberto Reyes. Hi, Estreberto. Ya tenía días de no escucharlo. Welcome. Let's see. Tell me number seven, please. We don't have Estreberto. Let's go with. Sandra Yanira. Okay, Sandrita, tell me number seven. Okay. Flor watches movies on Saturday. That's correct. Excellent. Very good. Miguel Morales, number eight. My mother doesn't make dinner on weekend. That's correct, sir. Very good. My mother doesn't make dinner on weekend. All right. Let's go with day. Recuerdan lo que les dije el day, ¿verdad? Que no es tercera persona singular. Y tampoco está en negativo. So let's see, Orlando Echeverría, what do you have for number nine? Okay, Miss. Uh, number nine. Mm -hmm. They do a study map on Fridays. On Fridays. Uh -huh. Okay, solo no le ponga el do, please. Okay. Uh, they study mm -hmm. map on Fridays. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Very good. Be chef, be chef. Uh -huh, Ronnie. Can you tell me that? Number eight, my mother doesn't. The number no, eight. Number eight. Yeah, I'm... my mother doesn't. Doesn't does make. Make. Mm -hmm. Yes, recuerde que my mother equivale a tercera persona al yeah. she. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Por eso estamos haciendo estas sentences, porque... Yo creo que estamos, como estamos aprendiendo, right, estamos acostumbrados a ver el, justamente el she, el it o el he, right, pero que hay cuando ya utilizamos el noun, right, ahí tenemos que saber identificarlo cuando ya utilizamos el noun. Right. Miss, I have a question. 
the number nine is the stars. E S E E S. No. They no es tercera persona. Entonces, siempre, iría tal cual como está ahí. Estar. Así de simple. De estar. Ok. okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Let me go with... Lourdes, number 10. My child. My child takes a bath every day. Exactly. That's correct. Very good. My, my child. Let's go with 11. Ya estamos a punto de terminar, right? So, Adriana, 11. What do you have for 11? My sister. Recuerde, Adriana, que my sister equivale a un she. Entonces, es tercera persona. My sister does. Ay, Ask me. My, my sister and does good mm, do good. Does um, bid at 10 or weekend, weekend, weekend days. Weekdays. Uh -huh. weekdays. Yes, weekdays. weekdays. Very good, Adriana. En este caso, Adrianita, no necesitamos el auxiliar porque mi verbo puede ejercer la acción solo, right? Entonces, solo lo paso a tercera persona. My sister goes to bed. Right? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And let's go with 12. Francisco, number 12. Susan studies English from 7. 15? 7, 5 to 9, 45. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Susan. Susan equivale a una tercera persona porque estamos hablando de ella, right? She. Susan studies English from 7 past 15 minutes to 9.45, right? Let's go with 13. Let me see. Miguel Morales, 13. Carlos. Carlos doesn't eat breakfast on Sunday because he cannot play. That's correct, Miguel. Carlos doesn't eat breakfast on Sundays because he gets up late. Right? Okay. Gets up late. Very good. Thank you, sir. Miss, pero que la estructura no nos dice que si tenemos el does. O el doesn't, ya no vamos a cambiar el verbo. Si se fijan aquí, tiene el verbo it. Y ese no lo cambié. Carlos doesn't eat. Hasta ahí llegué con esa parte. No le cambié el it. Porque la estructura nos dice de que el does o el doesn't ya son mis auxiliares. Ya ejercen ellos el trabajo. Por ende, mi siguiente verbo no lo va a cambiar. Pero de ahí sí la otra. Because he gets up. Como ahí no tengo ningún auxiliar, mi verbo principal ejerce la acción, right? Gets up. Y lo pongo en tercera persona porque seguimos hablando de Carlos. And let's go with the last one. Let me see. Laura, Pamela, please. For, eh, 14. Mm, my brother, his team done brushes at 11 p.m. He, his team at 12 p.m. Hey, let's see. Thank you, Laurita. Let me have. Let me see. Jaime Ernesto. Jaime, which one do you think it's the correct one in 14? 14. Mm -hmm. My brother doesn't brush his mm -hmm. teeth at 11 p.m. He brushes his He brushes his teeth at 12 p.m. That's correct, sir. Very good. Aunque aquí ya no me daba de nuevo el verbo, right? By logic, por lógica, me voy que si estoy utilizando el verb brush, aquí, como estoy hablando de he, puedo utilizar brushes, right? 
Bravo, everybody. Thank you so much for your participation. I know it was hard. Sé que pueden sentirlo un poquito eh, pesada, right? Pero este contenido ya lo vimos. Por ende, es bueno que lo tengamos en la mente siempre. Así que sigamos practicando. That's the key. Esa es la clave. All right, everybody. Let's move on. Let's go fast in this part. Food pyramid. All right. Let me share with you the... Let me share with you the platform, okay? Ven la plataforma, guys? Amy, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, so let's get into the business. Let's pay attention to the video, please. And coworkers, and think about their life Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn vocabulary related to the food pyramid. You'll also learn how to express the foods that you like and dislike. Let's get started by listening and practicing the vocabulary on this food pyramid. Food pyramid. For good health, eat a lot of grains, vegetables, and fruit. Eat some dairy, meat, and other protein. Eat very little fat, oil and sugar listen and practice fat oil sugar cream butter candy oil potato chips meat and other protein fish beans nuts Chicken, eggs, beef, dairy, milk, yogurt, cheese, fruit, bananas, apples, oranges, strawberries, mangoes, vegetables. Broccoli, carrots, lettuce, tomatoes, potatoes, grains, bread, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, pasta. Now, I would like for you to practice the vocabulary that we just learned. To do this, we're going to express the food that we like and don't like. We will practice each section of the food pyramid. Let me give you a couple of examples. For the first section, fat, oil, sugar. I like cream, butter, and oil. I don't like candy and potato chips. The idea here is to practice all the vocabulary. So while you may like all the stuff from this food pyramid, I would like for you to think about your friends, family, and coworkers, and think about their likes and dislikes. Um, for example, my sister likes milk, uh, yogurt, uh, but she doesn't like cheese. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to use all the vocabulary that we learned on this lesson and express likes and dislikes. After you complete this task, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, there you go. So let's go back to the PPT. That was just for you to see what the video was about. All right, so let's practice with the vocabulary. Here we go. We have the food pyramid, right? For good health, eat a lot of grains, vegetables, and fruit. No es fruit, es fruit. Eat some dairy, dairy food, no, dairy meat, and other protein. Eat very little, but oil and sugar, all right? 
Now, let's go. It says fat, oil, and sugar. Todos estos que ven ustedes aquí son los que componen esa parte de fat, oil, and sugar, que sería grasas, aceite, and azúcar, right? So, let's go with meat and other... Ah, and here we have cream, butter, candy, oil, and potato chips. All right, some of these are good for health. Some others are not. Okay, so let's go with the next one. Meat and other protein. We have fish, beans, nuts, chicken, beef, and eggs. And then you have dairy, which is milk, yogurt, and cheese, right? Let's go with fruit. We have bananas, apple, apples, oranges, oranges, right? Oranges, the strawberries, and mangoes. In this one, no me van a decir mangoes, <laughs> all right? Mangoes, mangoes. Let's go with vegetables. We have broccoli, we have broccoli, carrots, lettuce, Sé que se escribe lettuce, all right, lettuce, pero no se pronuncia así, se pronuncia lettuce, lettuce, all right? And then you have tomatoes and potatoes. Grains, we have bread, cereal, crackers, rice, and noodles and pasta. All right, everybody, let's practice with this vocabulary. Some of you are going to participate, so let's pray all of you are able to participate. Let's start with Esmeralda del Rosario. Esmeralda, please tell me the vocabulary from the pyramid. Okay, todo. Yes. Okay, cream, butter, oil, candy, potato chips, fish, Beans, chicken, nut, eggs, beef, milk, yogurt, cheese, bananas, apples, orange, eh, strawberries, mangoes, broccoli, 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 carrots, lettuce, lettuce, lettuce tomatoes, potatoes, bread, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, pasta. Excellent, thank you Esmeralda. Listen guys, it's funny. I know that you will feel like you are over exaggerating your voice, right? Sé que a veces podemos eh, escuchar como si estamos exagerando nuestra voz al pronunciar y eso es normal, es otro idioma. Si ustedes se fijan en el de nosotros, no somos tan fans y tan elegantes para hablar, right? No hacemos mucho juego con nuestra lengua para expresar las palabras, pero ellos sí, right? Entonces nosotros vamos siguiendo ese patrón porque estamos aprendiendo ese lenguaje. En este caso, repito las palabras que podrían pensar que se pronuncian así como están escritas. Yogurt, yogurt, lettuce, lettuce, broccoli, and apples. So let's get started. Let's see Orlando Echeverria. Tell me the vocabulary, please. If you need okay. help, let me know. Okay, miss. Fat, oil, and sugar. Cream, butter, candy, oil, potato chips. Meat and other proteins. Meat and other proteins. Fish, beans, Chicken, nuts, eggs, and beef. Day, meat, yogurt, and cheese. Fruit. This correct? Fruit. 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 Okay, fruit. Uh, bananas, orange, oranges. 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 Mm -hmm. Apples, strawberries, mangoes. Mango. Mangoes. Mangoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the vegetable, broccoli, carrots, lettuce, tomatoes, and potatoes. Grains, bread, cereal, 
eh, crackers, rice, noodles, and pasta. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Let me see Fabiola Cruz. Fabiola, your turn. And after Fabiola, Ronnie Avalos. Okay? Les voy a ir diciendo para que se vayan preparando. Let's see, Fabiola. Uh, okay. Um, fat, oil, and sugar. Um, cream, butter, candy, oil, and potato chips. And meat and other, other proteins. Fish, beans, chicken, nuts, eggs. Y bits, um, dairy, milk, yogurt, and cheese, fruit, and bananas, oranges, strawberries, apples, and mangoes, <laughs> um, vegetables, vegetables, broccoli, como? Vegetables. Vegetables. Bien raro. <laughs> um, broccoli. Uh, zanahorias, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Carrots. Carrots, tomatoes, potato, no, potato, potato. y lechuga, si se me olvida cada rato. Little. Como littles. Mm -hmm. um, grains, son braids, cereal, crackers, rice, noodles, and pasta. That's great, thank you. Let's go, Ronnie. Fat, oil, sugar, cream, butter, candy, oil, potato chips, and meat and other protein, fish, beans, chicken, nuts, egg, beef, dairy, milk, yogurt, cheese, fruit, banana, orange, apple, strawberry, Mango, very, uh, very fibrous. Now, very. How do you say? Bay, how do you say what? Vegetables. 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 Hmm? Vegetables. Yes. Broccoli, tomatoes, carrot, bitter, potato, green, 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 bread, cereal, crackers. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Very good. All right. What are we going to do next? Let me see. Los demás que no pasen ahora para el vocabulary van a pasar mañana, right? Ahorita es momento de que aprovechemos para ver si estamos pronunciando bien, eh, donde más podemos improvisar, all right? O mejorar. En todo caso, mejorar, improvisar. Okay, so let's see. Then you have the guiding examples. Esto sí lo quiero ver antes de que nos vayamos, porque a ustedes les va a tocar practicar en la platform. Tienen que colocar su exercise. So I like butter and oil. Así de simple. Preferences. I like butter and oil. I don't like candy and cream. Right? And let me go with number three. My mother likes fish. Nuts, beans, and beans, but she doesn't like cheese and yogurt. I mean, aquí esta no va, right? In yogurt. So, what are you going to do next? You are going to create only one sentence, all right? Because of the time, por el tiempo, solo los voy a poner a que creen una oración, all right? Ya sea con I like or I don't like, all right? Hagámoslo. Van a utilizar cualquier alimento de la pyramid, right? So there you go.
Now listen guys, in this one, let me check this one, right? In this one, if you have plural of candies, right? You can say either candies like this or también, or we can also say sweets. También podemos decir sweets, que es el que más se utiliza, right? Sweets, but in this case, we can change it to candies. Let me go, let me continue checking these sentences. Okay, now let me check these ones. I like the broccoli. In this case, Adriana, you don't need the article de. Solo puede decir, I like broccoli, right? No necesita el de. De y de lo contrario, si está correcto. All right, let me check somebody else. All right, guys, ahora ya todos se basaron en el chat box, ¿verdad? Ya no quieren hablar. Okay. Let's see, let me have, let me ask. Sandra, tell me your sentence, Sandrita. <laughs> okay, Fabi, I don't like um, let me see. I don't like candies and I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> All right. All right, kids, kids, <laughs> students, dear participants. Let me see, Miguel. Tell me your sentence. I like uh -huh. apples in mangoes. All right. Excellent. Very good. Easy peasy, right? Está fácil, everybody. Esto solo es de irnos con el vocabulary. Utilizamos el verb in simple present y ahí nos introducimos. Solo hacemos uso de dos verbs. El I like and I don't like. And that's it. Do you have any questions so far? ¿Tienen alguna duda o pregunta hasta aquí? Porque esto les va, se los van a pedir en la platform. Yes, no, Miss, no, everything is Yeah, clear. that's okay. Miss, I have a question. Uh -huh, tell me. Eh, pero eso acerca del ejercicio que hicimos de las oraciones. Uh -huh. en, la, en la sentence number 13. 13, uh -huh. uh, Usted explicó la modificación del verbo en la segunda parte, uh -huh. pero creo que no me quedó claro a mí, si uh -huh. me ayuda. Claro que sí, sir, para eso estamos. Bye. Cuando tenemos, ya tenemos aquí el subject pronoun Carlos, right? Que él equivale a un aquí. él. Ajá, exacto, aquí. Entonces, mire, la oración nos da una pista. Dice not plus it. Entonces lo vamos a pasar en negativo. Como no hay otra manera de ponerlo en negativo en el simple present, ponemos doesn't it, porque es tercera claro. persona. Ok. Pero luego, ¿qué sucede aquí? 
tenemos de nuevo el subject pronoun. Nos vuelven a poner el subject pronoun para que nosotros tengamos la oportunidad de poner aquí la parte positiva o afirmativa sin necesidad de utilizar un auxiliary. Entonces, por eso solo ponemos he gets up, porque si usted recuerda, en el third person singular, ¿qué es lo que le cambiamos al verbo? Si lo hacemos afirmativo. Uh, le agregamos la S. Exactly. Sin poderle. Ajá. Ok, sí, sí, es cierto. Este caso, este caso de, de, la, de la oración número 13, es el mismo caso igual de la número 1. Hay grab. O sea, uh -huh. No hay necesidad de modificar porque ya está implícito. There you go, okay. very good. Ok, gracias. Mi. All right, there you go, sir. All right, everybody, time's up. Es hora de dormir. It has been a pleasure to be with you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye, Tisha. Bye. Bye, Marachita. Bye, Marachita. Bye, Marachita. Good night. <laughs>